What's up guys, it is Clayton. Today we are going to be doing an unboxing of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and I'm also going to be giving you guys some of my thoughts on it now that I've had it for about three months. So, if you're part of my generation, I know you have a very short attention span, and I'm gonna give you guys a summarized version of the phone within the first uh, 15 seconds or so, and then go into depth about all the features that I mentioned and my initial thoughts on the unboxing. So far, this phone's experience has been flawless. Every app that I've wanted to use, feature that I've wanted to explore, and post that I have wanted to make has worked effortlessly. Every photo that I have imagined taking has turned out better than I thought it would. So if that's all that you were looking for in this video, then I would say go for it. Now I'm gonna go into a more in-depth review about the three key improvements of the iPhone 13 and what it has packed inside of it. So let's get straight to the point. The first major improvement is the battery. I actually made a jump from this phone because I had the iPhone XS Max Pro before and I got stuck into some three year agreement. Um, after that I basically jumped on this phone and a one year upgrade plan. But the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a battery life that is three hours better than the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And this makes it about 10,000 times better than the four minute battery life on my iPhone XS Max. Speaking of which, about 94% of you guys watching this right now are not subscribing. Now this may be because I haven't posted in several years, but I'm going to be posting a lot more awesome content, and you're not going to want to miss out. Secondly, the iPhone Pro is not just a little bit more powerful than the iPhone 12 Pro, but fantastically superior. And compared to my current iPhone, I feel like I just jumped into the future. There's been a 60% improvement on the graphics performance, this phone has passed the processing power of a PS4 and is approaching the processing power of a PS4 Pro, which is geared towards 4K gaming. All of this power is pretty much over the top, and if anything, it's more of a reinsurance that your phone is going to work properly. Another aspect of its power is the insanely bright filtering. It makes all of the iPhones before look like they accidentally put a window tint from the car on their phone screen. And finally, they added the two years past due technology of 120 hertz screen refresh rate, which is a very appropriate upgrade to this phone. They do this to save battery life, and this will noticeably improve your experience with apps that you scroll a lot on, like Instagram, TikTok, or other forms of social media. There is also a smaller notch on the front, which isn't super noticeable, but it is a nice touch that gives you a little bit more screen space. The third and my personal favorite improvement and reason why I got the phone is the camera. This is where Apple really had their focus and efforts. More than half of the improvements this year have been on the camera, which is why I bought this phone. I'm a huge photo and video fanatic. I think that the average user would really struggle to see some of the differences this phone has compared to some of the past iPhones. So I'm going to really highlight its photo and video capabilities in another video. It really doesn't matter if you're shooting cinematic mode in broad daylight or 4K video in low light. This thing is a beast in almost any conditions. I really want to talk about cinematic mode for a second. It is very interesting because this is one of the first times that Apple has actually released a beta feature. I think that this is a key reason to get the iPhone 13 and it is on track to be something huge. It is just like when portrait mode first came out on the iPhone. There are soft edges and it sometimes has errors recognizing true depth of field. However, look what portrait mode has become today. This really sets Apple apart because while other phone brands are competing with who could cram the largest sensor on the back of the phone, Apple has taken a very unique approach relying on computation rather than trying to do what we have done for all of history and just increase the size of the camera sensor. This is not only one of the most innovative parts of Apple, also current camera technology. Cinematic mode is a statement that Apple is going to be unique and use computation to fight competitors. Apple's mindset of releasing less features but more abilities on those features makes me very confident that this is going to be a game changer. When the full version of it comes out, it will support 4K video and have a more accurate depth of field using the LiDAR sensors. They are going to do everything possible with machine learning to make the blur as realistic as possible. Personally, I'm on a very fine line right now, deciding if I should carry around one of these things or just my iPhone. 